So in the previous lecture, we mentioned that hyperconjugated bonds are not exactly the same thing as pi bonds. And this is in fact a common misconception. In this lecture, I'd like to briefly talk about this common misconception. So we're going to differentiate between pi bonds and hyperconjugated bonds. We're also going to see which one of these bonds is the more stable, stronger bond. So let's begin with our pi bond. So in this system, we have our double bond known as the pi bond. So in our double bond, we have our sigma bond between the carbon-carbon, and we have the pi bond formed by an overlap of two p orbitals. So we have a two p orbital on this carbon that has uh, an electron, and an electron is found in this two p orbital. There's an overlap, and we form our pi bond. So the double bond is composed of overlap of two parallel 2p orbitals of adjacent carbon. Notice that we have two identical 2p orbitals and they're both parallel so that means we're going to have very good overlap and because we have good overlap we're going to have a relatively strong bond. So let's look at the different case. Let's look at hyperconjugation. So let's recall what hyperconjugation is. Let's suppose we have the following molecule. We have a carbocation that has an empty 2p orbital on this carbon. And adjacent, we have another carbon that is sp3 hybridized. So we have an sp2 hybridized and an sp3 hybridized adjacent to that carbon. And every single one of these bonds, this, this, and this bond, are identical. They're sp3 hybridized and they're carbon H bonds. Now, this carbon H bond has a filled sp3 hybridized orbital. And this filled orbital can interact with this empty 2p orbital, causing a relatively stabilizing effect known as hyperconjugation. Now, these two bonds are not exactly the same thing. This double bond is created from a P, from a pi bond. In other words, the pi bond is formed from an overlap of two 2p two orbitals, two identical 2p two orbitals. But in this case, we have a slightly different situation. This is not the same double bond. This is not a pi bond. This is the overlap of an empty 2p orbital and a filled sp3 hybridized orbital. So once again, in this case, we do not actually have the same type of double bond. Here, we have an empty 2p orbital interacting with a filled sp3 hybridized orbital. And notice that in this case, our two identical 2p orbitals were exactly parallel, but in this case, the angles are slightly off. And because the angles are slightly off, we're going to have a slightly different overlap. The overlap here will not be as good as here. So, on top of the fact that the overlap here is worse because the angles are different, the two types of orbitals are also different, and that means our overlap will, meet, will not be as good as in this case. So, if we draw our energy diagram, for the first case, we see the following situation. We have an electron in each of these exactly identical 2p orbitals that are found on the same exact energy axis forming two different molecular orbitals. So our two electrons go into the pi bonding uh, molecular orbital and we have a stabilizing effect. We have a very good overlap between these two orbitals. But if we look in this case, in the hyperconjugation case, our 2p bond is slightly higher in energy than this sp3 hybridized bond. And when we form our final molecular orbital, that energy will be slightly higher than this energy. So this pi bond will be slightly lower in energy than this molecular bond. And so this will be more stabilizing and stronger. The pi bond is a more stabilizing and stronger bond than this bond created via hyperconjugation. So once again, what is our conclusion?
the pi bond formed from the two identical parallel 2p orbitals produces molecular bond that has a better overlap and hence is more stable in the hyperconjugation system the two interacting orbitals are not parallel and produce a weaker less stable bond so once again hyperconjugated bonds are not exactly the same as the pi bonds found in double bonds we have a different type of interaction different orbitals are interacting in this case we have a more stabilizing interaction in the hyperconjugated case we have a less stabilizing interaction